Hey, what's up guys? It's your boy, Mr. Chapter Nutsack here, and today we're gonna see if we can beat God of War Ragnarok only using a shield. I also did this challenge on the original God of War, the one on PS4, not this one, and unlike that game, there are no skill trees for the shield, and shield exclusive combos are basically non-existent. What they did instead was add multiple different shields to the game that all have their own unique abilities. There's also different armors, enchantments, and shield attachments that can all affect the shields in different ways to make them better, so I will have to hold back on sending the developers a strongly worded letter with a dead rat threatening them to bring the shield skill tree back. With that out of the way, I start the game on Give Me No Mercy, which is the second hardest difficulty in the game, and then I almost immediately lower it to give me balance because I do in fact eat at Weenie Hut Jr. But don't worry your pretty little head, because this run was still torture because I'm taking out everyone. I'm talking all the main bosses, all the optional bosses, all the berserkers, I might even fuck around and beat your ass too, and I'm gonna kill the Valkyrie Queen. Basically every enemy in the first few hours of the game takes absolutely forever to kill because the shield you start out with is about as useful as a knitted condom and does the teeniest weeniest amount of damage possible. After taking an embarrassingly long time trying to kill the first group of enemies, I had to come up with some big brain high IQ tactics for the next few groups so I started leading them each out one or two at a time so I don't get overwhelmed by the raiders trying to raid me. I was also really happy to realize that the shield you start out with actually does have the ability to reflect projectiles back at your enemies, because without that, these first few sections would only be possible on opposite day. After a while, we make it to the first boss in the game that I am totally not related to, and this man has an absolute ass load and a half of health. Also, for some reason I forgot that this shield that I'm carrying could actually be used as a shield instead of a weapon because for a while I was just trying to dodge everything which was not working out but eventually I switched to just blocking and parrying which was a lot better. The thing that ruffles my feathers about this fight is when you parry him he does not get staggered so if you do parry him and try to attack him right after he'll probably just end up molly whopping you in the jaw. Eventually, the game will force you to use Rage Mode to do some damage because you literally can't do anything else until you use it, and then after that, the bear only does about two or three different attacks until you finally boop him in the snoot enough times to knock him out cold. I did try to just keep damaging him while he was down, but eventually he'll just get up and regain a chunk of health, so like a lot of the bosses in this game, you do have to use a finisher on him. And sweet mother of Mary Jesus, it turns out I am related to this bear. Soon after that, we make it to our first Thor fight, and I'm only going to go over it pretty briefly because the second fight with him at the end of the game is way more interesting. The only two things he'll really do in the first phase are try to act like a drunk friend at a party and either try to give you a bro hug or throw hands with you, but luckily if he does try to throw hands with you, it's really easy to parry and get some easy damage in on him. The next phase he will add a few different new moves with his little hammer that you could easily just block, but sometimes he will follow up that combo with a nice little dick kick that you can parry for some free damage. After bashing his face in with your shield approximately 332 times, you will get one of the coolest scenes in video game history where the boss will literally kill you just so he can revive you again and then ask you about your car's extended warranty. Now that was definitely a tough fight, but the real challenge came immediately after when I was faced with my first couple of enemies with elemental health bars. Basically what that means is if you see an enemy with a blue health bar, you need to use your chaos blades, and if you see an enemy with a red health bar, you need to use your axe. But in case you're blind or click this video with your eyes closed, I cannot use either of those things because I can only use a shield. And the banana on top of that is that I can't even stagger one of these guys if they have one of those health bars, so all I could really do is just stand in this corner and pray to NCR Trooper number 74 that I can nail about 100 parries in a row without taking a hit. And once I'm finally done with that mental torture, I somehow gather the willpower to keep pushing and immediately have to face another one of those guys, and then immediately have to face two more of those guys, plus 10 regular enemies, and I cannot tell you how long I struggled on this part. That is until I realized that you can simply coerce them into falling off this cliff by gently pushing them with your shield bash, and once I figured that out, it only took me a few minutes to get past this section, and I felt like the silliest of gooses for not thinking of this an hour ago. Soon after that, we make it to our first Huntress fight, and if you played this already, you already know that they break your shield during this boss, and you're probably wondering how I'm going to get around that. Well, it turns out you don't actually need a shield to do a shield bash, you can just start smacking them nice and hard with your forearm, and I was absolutely baffled, but I'm going to say this still counts. After I let a handful of enemies taste my forearm, we finally make it to the shop so I can choose between two different shields to craft. The Dauntless shield is pretty similar to the one you start with, except now when you parry an enemy, it'll charge up your next shield bash to give your enemies invisible wings, and the effect is even stronger if you can get a perfect parry, which is the same thing except at the very last second. The other one is actually a lot different, because with the Stonewall shield, instead of being able to parry, you can just hold the block button and absorb attacks, and then do a shield slam that gets stronger with the more attacks you absorb. I decided to risk it for the brisket and chose the stonewall shield at first since it was different than the one I've been using and it turns out that it actually does more damage than the other shield which I guess makes sense since it's four times the size and twice the girth. 
One issue that I did face throughout the run is that since I had to keep swapping between multiple different shields, that means I had to try to keep them all the same level. So that means that I needed to gather a bunch of different materials, which was mighty difficult. And since your level is more important than your actual stats in the game, having to use a lower level shield since some are way better for certain situations could make you a lower level, making the enemies a lot tougher, which is pretty annoying, but I'm being very brave about it. A little while later, we make it to the next boss, who I struggled with at first until I finally stopped being a soy boy beta cuck and actually attempted to parry him for once. After that, we take out the lizard squad and most likely made this the most deadly cliff in the world, which would probably be called like Death Cliff in some Disney Channel original movie where the protagonist would need to jump in on his BMX to prove himself to the bullies and get the girl or something like that. On my way to the next area, for no reason at all other than my Sigma grind set, I decided to fight the hateful Draugr boss, which was already extremely difficult on my normal playthrough and definitely had my heart pounding pretty irregularly on this one. It took me a handful of attempts because he's constantly trying to make his way into your personal bubble, plus he has some unblockable attacks that you can't parry, and he has some jabronis in the back that are always trying to attack you at the same time that you have to deal with before even thinking about taking out Papa Draugr. After that, we need to make our way down the hall so we can mollywob Lord Farquaad in the nose a few times and we can rescue Princess Fiona from the castle. My punishment for that is having to do my first Atreus section, who I figured would ruin this run because he doesn't have a way to hurt enemies with a shield or anything, but I was filled with a childlike glee to realize he actually does have a shield bash and it does damage enemies. That glee quickly faded when I realized that now I have to go through these sections as Atreus only using his shield, which really sucks. Because he only has this one shield. He does not get a bunch of other options with special attacks or anything. He has no parry counters, no shield skill tree, nothing. And not only that, but he completely ruins the run because they almost immediately put me up against somebody that's up on a cliff and is completely unreachable with my shield. And unlike Kratos, you can't reflect projectiles back at your enemies, so there's not really much I could do. I did notice that when you aim at him that he'll sometimes dodge to the left or right, so I was hoping that he would slip on some ice or something and fall to his death, but it never happened. But luckily I blacked out for a second and they both ended up dead, so lucky break I guess. Then we deal with some new light elves and they were, um, yeah. Huh? Oh, oh! <laughs> Yeah, that's what happens, man. Oh my god! Yeah, that's what happens. Where's my money? You gonna give me my money? Where's my money, man? Oh my god! I kept accidentally stun grabbing people at one point and having to restart, so I finally checked a menu and you can't actually change it, so it's holding X instead. After significantly lowering the elf population, we finally make it to the Alvin fight, who is about as difficult as the regular elves except she has 10 times as much health and you can't knock her off, so it was basically parry city for about 10 minutes straight. The only thing I really noticed during this fight is that shield attachment that I went out of my way to get earlier really sucks ass, because I parried her about a thousand times during this fight and I never even got enough rage to use it a single time. Now we get to play as Atreus again, and I'm gonna go over this very fast because it's a really long and boring section where I did my absolute best to run past as many enemies as I could and it did actually work a few times until I got stuck at this group of like a million nightmares. They took forever to kill and then I spent even longer hunting down what I thought was the last one but was actually an imposter and then spent even longer looking for the real last one who I found stuck in a tree where I couldn't reach him. I tried coercing him down by offering him a hit of the runescape cart but he already had a south cart so he refused but I was able to knock him loose by parrying his blast right next to him instead. Then I face some more enemies that I can't reach but Argonian can and then we break the werewolf fight and then we finally make it to the part where I get to beat her grandma's ass and boy oh boy do I wish this was not doable with the shield. What you're supposed to do in this fight is use your bow to shoot the emblem on her little cauldron thing which is completely unreachable with any of your melee attacks. The only way I could reach it is if I stand over in this specific corner and then just keep jumping up and down trying to get her close enough so I could hopefully bash the symbol with my shield like one or two times. It takes a while sometimes to get her in the right position and even when you do it literally does the smallest amount of damage that the engine will allow. Also if you get lucky Argonian will shoot her every once in a while without you telling her to but it's not very often so I wouldn't rely on that. There are also checkpoints about every third of her health bar so that was nice but eventually you will get to the point where she starts turning around and attacking you making it even more impossible to actually reach the cauldron. Every once in a while after you dodge like a million attacks she will turn around again and get into position but it is so rare now and it takes so long that eventually I just gave up. Even when I did manage to do some damage, I could not stop dying because I haven't even mentioned that this is also a really difficult fight when you do it this way because she has mostly AoE attacks that are really hard to avoid when you're trying to stay in her face the entire time. 
So if you're keeping track, we are at one mandatory fail because I had to shoot that guy with Atreus and one optional fail because I was too much of a weenie to finish what I started. So I guess my dad was right about me, but it doesn't matter now because now we get to play as Kratos again. First thing we have to do is take out this group of Draugr with the power of Pine Saw and then almost immediately face this super secret Valkyrie that is definitely not one of the only three people I know in this world. It's basically the same story as the Alvin fight. Most of her attacks can be parried and she gets stunned extremely quickly, which takes a nice chunk of her health bar away. I did die one time but other than that it was a massacre for her i mean whoever this is <gasps> no way then we make our way through vanaheim with brock and that's when i realized that he's actually a beast and was completely carrying this team the whole time then we have to face a forest ancient and i'm pretty sure in my last god of war video i said you can't kill them with a shield well don't believe everything you hear on the internet because i lied to you you actually can reflect the bombs back at them which will stun them and then leave them open for some shield bashes and when you reflect them, it'll leave some bombs on the floor, and since I can't throw them or anything, they'll just explode on their own eventually, so if you just, you know, happen to start walking backwards, and then, you know, he just starts chasing you, and they happen to explode on him and kill him, I mean, shit, it is what it is. And then we have to fight one of these guys, which was really only annoying because he has so much health, and he doesn't always get staggered when you parry him, which is never fun, but by the end, I really wanted to use a finisher on him because he just kept getting knocked down with every hit. But I am a man of integrity, so I would never purposely do that, so I switched to my stonewall shield since that does more damage, and turned him into the past tense that way. And then we have to fight this big old dragon with Freya, which was pretty uninteresting for the most part. Once you learn his moves, it's really easy to just block them and absorb them and release that energy all over his face. The hardest part about this fight is for some reason they programmed Freya to be the most annoying backseat gamer imaginable, and you somehow have to refrain from dying on purpose so she never gets free. Once we get to the next section, we actually do have to use our axe and our blades, but not actually to hurt the boss. All we have to do is hit Freya's sigils on the trees, which will do nothing but gently explode and stun the boss, not actually hurt him. So, um, nanana boo boo, uh, stick your head in doo doo. Other than that, the rest is pretty boring. Just keep hiding behind your shield, dodge sometimes. He drops a ton of health crystals throughout the fight, so I never really had to worry about dying. GG, GG. After that was taken care of, we immediately run into a special kind of wisp that cannot take damage unless you shoot them with an arrow first, and I knew that that was going to be a problem, but I had no idea how to solve it, so I put that off for later for future tie to solve. Later came extremely quick, when I almost immediately ran into another group that I was not able to run away from this time. I legit had no idea what to do, I probably sat here for at least an hour trying to get them to go out of bounds or despawn or sneak past them or something, but none of that worked. I thought I had a big brain blast moment when I accidentally got one of them to go under this log and end up on the other side because I'm pretty sure they're supposed to stay behind it but if you jump over it right when they're doing a specific attack they'll end up on the other side. I tried my best to push one of them into the water with my shield or something which never did work but then I saw Freya hit one of them into the water and it actually did kill them. And when I saw that happen after literally an hour, I got so excited that I got out of my chair, jumped comically high and clicked my heels together and a little ding played in the background. Unfortunately, I was lay epic trolled because it turns out he does actually die, but they will just keep duplicating themselves unless you're able to kill them all really fast from one another, which I am unable to do. My disappointment was probably as high as my dad's when I was born, but I did keep trying everything I could think of, but nothing seemed to work, so I did in fact have my first official fail as Kratos and had to use Freya's arrows to kill them. But that's not important. What's important is now I have access to Lunda's armor quests. I need to get three separate pieces, and for the first one, I just need to make it to that door over there. First thing I need to do is get past these enemies, which was fine enough even though I was almost dead the entire time, and then one of the guys with the red health bar came out and my heart sank a little bit, but luckily I backed up far enough to de-aggro him and he kinda just fucked off somewhere else. Then I just stealthily sprinted my way over to the door and managed to get it without anyone else seeing me, and then I did the same thing for the next piece when I sailed over to this island, snuck past this revenant because I'm 90% sure you can't kill them without arrows, but we will deal with that later. Now we need to make our way to the next island, which is actually the same island for now because I need to open this gate and the only way to do that is to climb this rope, but I have to sneak past these enemies, which unfortunately I was bamboozled and some of them spawned out of the ground, so then I had to fight all the nightmares, got on the boat, got off the boat, came back, snuck around the revenant, and once that was taken care of I didn't have to fight anything else to get the last piece. This armor has a high luck chance to deal bonus damage from my parries and my blocks and gives my parries and blocks a chance to poison the enemies which will lower their level for a few seconds. The other two pieces make it so I do more melee damage towards poisoned enemies but I'm like 90% sure that that does not refer to shield bashes so they're basically useless but I still went out of my way to get them anyway because I wanted Kratos to be Gucci down to the socks and even after all that effort he still gets no bitches. 
After crying about that for a while, we have to play as Atreus again, and one of the first things we have to do is fight some of those invincible wisps, and it took a while, and I don't know why it worked, but some of them just started exploding, and for the others, I kind of just blocked them when they were out of bounds, and they just started falling and dying on their own, so I actually did not have to use a bow. But then I had to face some more, and sadly this time there are no cliffs, and pushing them into the water doesn't seem to work, so I tried pushing them into this cave to see anything would happen, and I almost died doing that, so I turned into a wolf to heal, and then they died. And I'm gonna say it was probably because of global warming and not me turning into a wolf, so yeah, moving on. And then I ran into some of these things that even if you kill them, they spawn other things, and then they'll turn back into those things, and those things will start spawning more things, so I had to use the arrow on those things to stop them from duplicating and spawning more things. Also, do any of you guys remember those Flash games called Thing Thing? I love that shit. Now I finally get the Guardian Shield, and it took a while for me to find a good use for it, but it became one of my favorites for sure. At first, it seemed too similar to the Dauntless Shield. It can parry, it can reflect projectiles back, but the regular parry bash is a little bit stronger. Plus, when you parry, you can do a counter attack that does a nice chunk of damage that's probably about as much as getting a perfect parry with the Dauntless Shield. The downside is though that it doesn't have the same big knockback effect that the Dauntless Shield has, so that makes the Dauntless Shield better for knocking enemies off cliffs and building a stun meter on bosses, and the Guardian Shield better for normal combat situations with small groups of enemies. After that, we soon have to face a ton of enemies with blue health bars, and I immediately threw my controller at the wall out of frustration, but I forgot that I filled it with confetti a long time ago, so when it exploded, I was still in a pretty good mood. I also realized how much the new abilities on my shield help, because you can just see them losing health a lot of the times when they hit my shield, which is fan freaking tastic and that got me to start focusing on items with luck, so I would get that effect more often. We're also faced with a revenant at the end, and would you look at that, I finally have a way to kill them without awkwardly trying to push them off a cliff or sneaking past them or something, and I just stand back, let her keep hurting herself on my shield, while Freya takes pop shots every once in a while. Then we have to face our first phantom boss, and this one specifically is 100% doable with only a shield. I did have to fight him the opposite way I normally would, because normally I would just keep my distance and just use range attacks, but obviously I had to stick close to him and just keep smashing him with my stone wall shield. Going into this, I figured the Dauntless Shield would build his stun meter faster, but since it's kind of a special mechanic with this boss, it doesn't seem to affect it as far as I could tell, but regardless, once he goes down, you put the splurge on the Yonki, rinse and repeat that a few times, and we move on. Nothing too exciting happens for the next few hours, I just do some combat in a vape shop, get a shield attachment that increases my parry timing, live out my dreams as an exterminator, and just because I hate myself, I decided to do the first berserker fight. Not gonna lie, this was a very tedious fight, and I did end up using my dauntless shield because it builds the stun meter faster than the others, but I honestly couldn't tell if it was faster than the guardian shield, and regardless, it still takes a hot minute to beat him no matter what shield you use. Luckily, he only has about four or five different attacks, and once you learn the parry timing and the dodges on them, it's actually pretty easy. You just have to stay very consistent because of how much health he has and how much damage he does, but by the time I finally beat him, I think I only got hit one time. And just because I was having too much damn fun, I have to play as Atreus again, and I was very surprised to learn that Thug can actually do damage to the Revenants herself, unlike any of my other companions. Sadly though, I did have to kill somebody with my bow up here, and then right after that I had to face two revenants without Thug, but it turns out you actually can damage them as Atreus with your shield bash for whatever reason. It just does a very, very small amount of damage. Finally, we get to play as Kratos again, and the first thing I do is take out a giant group of enemies by imagining they're a bunch of toddlers that want me to adopt them, and then we finally make it to the Garm fight. He was actually a really easy fight, just has a huge health bar, but only like three different attacks, all of which are pretty easy to dodge, especially his chain whip since it reminds me of dodging my dad's belt, and you are supposed to freeze it in place with your axe, but that's not very shield-like, so I just didn't do that. This whole thing took me about 20 minutes, even though it was really easy, it just took a really long time, and I think I only almost died like one time at the very end. Now that that's taken care of, we get rewarded with a shiny brand new shield that has the ability for us to stand really far away from an enemy and then charge forward at them and end it with a big shield bash attack. So, um, that's fucking useless. Now we get attacked by Garm again, and you're supposed to use your spears on his weak spots on his leg, but you can just get really close to him and just keep smacking him in the face instead. Then we have to do the second real fight with him, which is even easier than the first, except for this one really hard part where you somehow have to find the willpower within yourself to not beat the absolute fuck out of Atreus for telling you to use your spear on his weak spot approximately a thousand times throughout the fight. After that, I was surprised with literally one of the hardest sections in the entire run for me. There are only five enemies in total, but three of them have colored health bars, which is already annoying in itself, but these ones will actually keep regenerating after you break them. Plus, I have no healing items, no rage to heal, and they all have Bifrost. 
after dying about a million times, I realized the only way I'm gonna get through this is by rubbing my two brain cells together and actually coming up with a solid plan which was to first run in here, get some cheap shots on this douche nozzle before he puts his red health bar on, and then kill the level 4 archer up here, but make sure not to kill both of the archers, because if you kill them both, then more enemies with colored health bars are going to spawn in. After that, just come to the bottom and just pray you don't get shot off screen while your bifrost meter is full and take most of your health like I did right here. Once you take him out, the other two will spawn in, and that's when I just cower up in this corner, holding up my shield and letting them hurt themselves. The only reason I didn't do this same strategy for the other guy is that these two don't have any unblockable attacks, but the other one did, so I couldn't just hold up the shield against him. So if you don't want to restart this part over and over, just play it extremely safe, only attack when you know you won't get hit, and after an extremely long time, they will off themselves and you can unclench your butthole and take out the last archer who falls in the funniest way possible. Then we immediately face Hemorrhoid's pet, which was much easier than I expected because, I mean, look at the damage I'm doing to this fool, and the invincibility I get while I'm reflecting something back at him is icing on the cake. GG, easy. Sadly, Hemorrhoid himself, as you can probably guess, you have to use the spear to hurt him since that's what this fight was designed for. I was really hoping that he would take damage from me blocking him, but sadly he does not, and now I'm sad, and to top it all off, he keeps making fun of my shield. So I'm forced to use the spear to stun him a few times, enough to be able to punch him, and then I can use my shield from that point on. It's pretty easy, he only has like three different attacks, you can only parry one of them, well two technically, but he always dodges a projectile that you send back to him, so that's pretty lame. And he also gets two silver health bars throughout the fight, so that's always fun. And despite the fact that I am whooping his ass with just a shield, he keeps talking shit like that one kid at school that would call you Ty Gaylor instead of Ty Taylor because he thinks he's so smart and handsome because he's told your girlfriend and then she told you that he's a better man than you'll ever be so you cried home alone in the dark on prom night with only the light of the TV and the Black Ops 3 menu theme playing on repeat while you stare at your phone just hoping that she'll call. Yeah, I, I hate it when that happens. Anyway, we do the second fight, which is also very easy. He does have a couple more moves to parry, but I also do a lot of damage with my counters, and also he keeps trying to bro hug me throughout the fight, but he didn't say no homo, so I must refuse. With that complete, we've unlocked something very important, being the dragon area in Vanaheim. That's because we can finally get some new armor, which I am pretty sure is the only armor in the game that specifically increases the damage of your shield bashes. Actually just getting the armor is easy enough, but to be able to upgrade it to actually be useful is the tough part because we have to take out a bunch of dragons. And most of the dragons are pretty samey and have similar-ish moves, so I'm only going to focus on the hardest one I face, which was this big fella right here. Do you see that? Do you see that purple health bar right there? That basically means that he is a way higher level than me, and I probably shouldn't be fighting him right now, but in the great words of JFK, fuck it, we ball. This was definitely one of the hardest fights so far, and probably took me a couple hours to finally beat, but mostly because I was too stubborn to go level up and come back later, and at one point I got so mad that I bit into a light bulb that for some reason tasted exactly like blood. In the first part, he always starts out the same way. He'll keep trying to bite you and then shoot some ice at you, which not only does a good amount of damage, but will also slow you down and mess up your parry timing. Eventually, you'll do enough damage to where he'll fly in the air and either do an attack that you need to dodge or parry, and he mostly sticks to these attacks until you get about halfway through, and then he'll start adding a bunch of different attacks like this ice beam that you have to roll through because if not it's going to take about half your health bar and at this point there are way less opportunities to do damage unless he does that attack from the first half or he tries to grab you and you can parry it for a couple shield bashes whatever you do and whatever strategy you come up with it is an extremely tedious process from start to finish would not recommend zero out of ten go play shrek for the 3ds instead I ended up spending a ton of time in this area, taking out a bunch of optional bosses and stuff, and like I said before, if you want to see the full boss fights, there should be a video in the description with all the fights from start to finish. And after all that hard work and all those hours I spent getting myself leveled up and ready for the end game, I have to play as Atreus once again, and the first thing I have to do is this super riveting bar scene where, oh no, they take away all my weapons except for my bow and shield? There's no way I can do this now. Honestly, the best part of this entire section is the fact that I didn't notice in my first playthrough that when Thug tells you to shoot these guys below, which by the way I did not have to do, your sword and Thor's hammer are fighting over to the left the entire time, which kind of tickled my funny bone. Nothing much else happened except I got Thor to do most of my dirty work for me, he even killed the soul eater so I didn't have to use my bow, and then we're back as Kratos to head towards the end game. First thing we have to do is take out these two Valkyries and shiver me timbers, it was way easier than I thought it was going to be. 
I was able to get through the first two phases without even dying, and they both have an attack where they strike you a ton of times with their wings or knives, and as long as you're blocking, it does nothing but hurt them, so that was pretty great. What's even better is when they hit you enough times to lower their own level, and they start taking way more damage, and I honestly wish there was more to say about this fight, but there's really not. Now we have to invade Asgard, where it was pretty boring for the most part, except I do have to be Atreus and kill like 20 dudes as a bear, so I guess he is now part wolf, bear, giant, and part war. Alright, the Berserker King. 13 minutes. That's how long it took. 13 whole minutes of almost perfection. I would go over all the Berserker fights, but one, that would double the length of this video, and two, why do that when the King is basically all of their attacks and what feels like all of their health bars in one body? I originally planned on using the Guardian Shield for this one, but he has one specific attack where he'll float up in the air for a second and charge up, and all you have to do is hit him a single time, but for whatever reason, the Guardian Shield cannot reach him, but the Dauntless can, so Dauntless it is. Luckily, he does have a ton of different attacks that you can parry, but a lot of them you can't counter right away because he's too fast, and for the other ones, you need a perfect parry to counter with, because if not, it won't stagger him, and he'll just hit you instead. And you're probably looking at this and thinking, damn, you've already done a lot of damage to him. Why does it take so long? Well, my handsome, intelligent, and probably well-endowed viewer, he basically ends up getting two or three colored health bars throughout the fight, basically doubling the length. And honestly, even though I'm bitching, this was probably my favorite fight throughout the run because it was really satisfying to learn all of his attacks and the parry timings and everything. And even though I got really close to dying at the end because I was super nervous, it was really fun. All right, Valkyrie Queen, considered to be the hardest boss in the entire game and probably was harder than the Berserker, but mostly because I didn't get the luxury to learn every single one of his attacks right before the fight. It also only took me 10 minutes, which was a few less than the Berserker, but that's mostly because she has significantly less health than him. I learned pretty quickly that staying in her face is definitely the best option for me because at a distance, I almost always got wrecked in the fight because I find it super difficult to tell which attack she's about to do and prepare accordingly. I figured out afterwards that she will jump in a specific direction before doing a certain attack, but at the time I didn't know that and in my head all I could think was do not roll unless I see a red circle because if you roll to the right or left on the wrong attack it is perfectly designed to hit you. And if you don't roll to the right or left on a different attack it is also designed to hit you and they practically look the same and there is a melee and ranged version of both of these attacks. I was actually able to get through like 80% of this fight without taking a single hit, but just like the Berserker in the last one, I got very nervous at the end and just started getting absolutely wrecked. Didn't matter though, because I still made it through, and like I said, the best thing for me to do was just to stay in her face the entire time, just to avoid those ranged attacks altogether, and it made it a lot easier for me. <laughs> Now we can skedaddle back to the Thor fight, and for this one I have to be very restrained because if I just keep bashing him non-stop, he almost always starts throwing hands with me and they come out super quick, so if you're in the middle of an animation, he's just gonna absolutely rock your shit. His stun meter also fills very quickly, so I just stuck with the Dauntless Shield since most of his moves can be dodged or parried pretty easily. The last phase is when it gets super difficult because the arena starts getting filled with lightning strikes everywhere that if you touch you get hurt, and I have the spatial awareness of a walnut so I was constantly stepping on them. It was pretty much just a matter of survival at this point because it takes forever, I die in a few hits, and I'm almost constantly trying to avoid taking damage. Plus, at the end when he goes down, I was gonna see if I could just finish him off with my shield, but most likely he would just keep getting back up, plus there's lightning strikes surrounding him constantly, and then Mimir gave me the advice I needed to hear. I know you didn't want this, but he's not giving you a choice. Let's go! Now we can do the first Odin fight, and it was surprisingly easy. It actually only took me two tries to beat him, and I am still on Give Me No Mercy. For some reason, I was using my Dauntless Shield at first, but it's really hard to fill his stun meter because there's a lot of times that he flies up to the air where you can't reach him, so it's really hard to keep it up. Ha, that's what he said. <laughs> I did end up switching to my Guardian Shield in the second phase because he just has a ton of attacks that you can just parry super easily that he just does over and over. And I feel like Jake Paul beating this old man's ass, but you gotta do what you gotta do, and I really wish there was more to say about him, but there's not. That is, until we get to the second fight with him. This one was extremely difficult for many reasons. One being that he constantly summons these red orbs that track you everywhere that you're normally supposed to use your arrows for, but since that's for weenies, I had to find a different way to avoid them. The best thing I could do was just try to stay really close to Odin and stay under the balls as soon as he summons them, and then they'll kind of just slowly float to the ground and hopefully you can get out of the way and they'll crash to the floor. Or if you get lucky, Odin might even destroy some of them himself if he decides to attack you with his whip or something. He also hits extremely hard for an old geezer, and it took me a ton of tries just to get past the first phase, only to be met with three colored health bars throughout the fight. It was torture. 
he basically still does the same moves. He does add a few new ones, except now I have to basically be perfect because you can only do so much damage before he puts on another colored health bar. Plus, avoiding the orbs consistently is super difficult, especially when you have to avoid attacks from him constantly. And of course, I had like no rage in the fight, so I couldn't heal myself, all except for one green crystal. Admittedly, it probably would have been easier just to use the stonewall shield, but mama ain't raised no bitch, and this just felt right. And yeah, that's it. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it, especially if you made it this far. I apologize that it took me so long to make a new video, but it is around Christmas time, the seasons of giving, and I'm going to be giving up, but you guys can give me a like or subscribe if you think I deserve it, and that'll make me the happiest Christmas boy ever. Anyways, have a good rest of your day, and Christmas, and New Year's, and all of that good stuff. Peace. Oh!